I work with trying to understand what exactly the HIV virus is doing to the brain. Now most people when they think about HIV, they think about it causing immunosuppression and the people suffering from a variety of infectious diseases, etc., opportunistic infections. But actually, fully 50% of people that are infected with HIV suffer neurological complications. And that's really flown a little bit under the radar to date. Most of the antiretroviral drugs that people in developed countries are taking um, don't cross the blood-brain barrier. So actually, the virus is allowed to kind of replicate in the brain and smolder away and cause a little bit of damage on a gradual basis. And then, maybe years or decades later, the person finds themselves with significant neurological deficits. And actually, it's interesting, the virus gets into the brain within just a few days of infecting a person, and, and it starts doing its damage in that early first week and thereafter. Um, and so what we're starting to understand now is that in order to protect the brain, we've got to be able to design drugs that can target the brain and protect it from the damaging effects of the virus. What we've been looking at specifically recently is already existing drugs, maybe even drugs that are off patent, that do get into the brain and can um, ameliorate those problems that the virus is causing in the brain even in a person that's already on antiretroviral drugs. So for example, uh, we've studied a drug called minocycline. It's a tetracycline derivative. We showed uh, using the macaque model uh, that it um, uh, suppresses the neurological damage that's being caused by, uh, by the virus.